the battlefields are everywhere No need for soldiers, now's the time for those who really care You are the heroes cause the battlefields are everywhere No need for soldiers, now's the time for those who really care Welcome fans of the modeling world, uh, or generally guitar players, or maybe you're not even a guitar player. Maybe you like people in cat sweaters and that's why you're watching. So today we're watching, why am I yelling? I don't know. Today we're looking at, today we're looking at the pod go. <laughs> um, this is a five video series, which we, um, cats, could, could you not do that? This is, this is a five video series um, where you're not paying attention to me, you're paying attention to the cats, right? <laughs> Say for two bisschen Arsch. <laughs> okay, so uh, <laughs> this is a five video series. I said this several times already. Um, so that means in this video, we're not talking about the differences between the Pod Go and the HX Stomp, which is a burning question that you all have, but we have a dedicated video looking at all the differences, uh, hardware-wise, software-wise, and how it sounds. <laughs> Big-ass Helix for $1,700 uh, or the Pod Go? Where's the difference? What does the Helix have that the Pod Go doesn't? And uh, how do they differ in sound? Separate video. <laughs> Do you want to hear all the presets it comes with? Guess what? I can't, I can't do that on the left. Separate video! And, uh... Line 6 is partnered up with Rev to finally not have a fake name in there, but actually say Rev. So there's the Rev Red channel and the Rev Purple channel, brand new right now. And you want to know how close does it get to the actual, right there behind me, Rev, or over there, the 740 and the Red channel of that? How close does it come? Well, we're going to take a look at that in video number 5. <laughs> Today, we're doing a general overview. Are we going to go through every algorithm of every delay, every modulation? We cannot. I'm sure there's videos out there. Are we going to go into the editor? There's tons of videos of the Line 6 editor, uh, which applies to the Helix HX Stomp and this. Please watch them. I cannot cover it all. Are we going to do the four cable method and put this in front of an amp, blah, blah, blah? I personally don't think that's the, the, that's the way to use this. Uh, so I'm not going to. Could you run it in front of an amp because it has a two amp output? Yes, you can. But if I have an amp, realistically, 
I'm going to stick with analog pedals. I'm going to get a delay, a reverb, whatever. I don't want to have a helix type or pod type device and pair it with my amp. The benefit of this is it's an all-in-one solution. You smack on the floor, you take to a gig as a backup solution. You take to a gig um, if you don't want to carry all this stuff. Um, it, there's many benefits to it. It's great for recording at home if you're on a budget because it's got everything in one box. But pairing it with your analog gear, it's totally possible and there's pr probably benefits to that, but I'm not going to go into it. So we're going to go into what it is, what it does. So the Pod Go does have all the models for amps, caps, uh, it delays, all the other uh, stomp boxes of the Helix family, which is amazing. The interface is slightly different and you cannot have um, an integrated amp and cap combo. It's always amp and cap separately. Um, and you can't have dual cap, meaning uh, using two caps at the same time. There isn't a function in the Helix for that. You can't have a parallel path. So you can't say, okay, uh, that goes here, but then this goes through this thing and then into the cap. It's a little bit simpler in terms of the, in terms of the architecture, but if none of that matters to you, it's all there. So let's look at the overall thing right here. So we can't see the <laughs> interface right now because it's glaring but you have bank up and bank down and then a b c d and you can select four presets right away you can push mode and that gives you access to six stomp boxes or uh, uh turning on the external uh, effects loop um all this so uh that's just the second mode and then there's tap if you hold it in you're in the tuner section uh it's a dolphin safe tuner uh -huh. Um, relatively straightforward. So now you can see uh, I can push bank up and down. It gives me the four sounds and I have overview right there over what they are. Uh, right now it's telling me I haven't selected anything. So I can select D and that's relatively easy to see when you're standing up. It's relatively big. So that's pretty cool. If I push left and right, it's giving me the, the main parameters that I might want to control. If I push view, I'm kind of in, um, in like an edit mode. And we're going to get to that. But right in this mode, if I push mode, it's showing me what the stompies will do. So right here, I can turn my parametric Q on off. This would be the external effects loop. I have nothing connected. Uh, this turns my compressor on and off, my overdrive, my spring, my tremolo. So that makes your program is very flexible. You can also see that there's a snapshot here. There are three snapshots, which are kind of like presets within the presets, which you can have three of, and you can probably assign them to the stomp box, uh, the, the, the foot switches too. I don't know how, but just know that you can. So that means that within a preset, you can kind of do on and off states and even different parameters uh, and save that to a snapshot. Uh, so if we push View, now we're in the edit mode and we're gonna get to that. There's always a Y if you want that, a volume pedal, which of course you have here. When you're pushing this in hard, it switches to the Y, look at that. That's really cool and it's actually showing you on the interface right there. Yeah, so on the interface right there, it's showing you whether you have Y or volume selected, which is very nice. There is my external effects loop which can be stereo if you have TIS cables, different boxes, my amp, a box in between, a cap, and more stomp boxes. This parametric EQ cannot change into anything else. It, is, it, it, it can only be EQs. So it's kind of like an EQ, EQ block that you can't morph into anything else. Before we go into more, let's talk about ins and outs. You have a guitar input. There is no stereo input option. You have uh, an input for more expression pedals if you wanted that. Although it's nice to have the onboard one and I'm pretty sure that's, that's enough uh, if you ask me. But if you want more, you can to control more, more parameters uh, or to have a dedicated wah pedal. There's a stereo insert in and out for aux or uh, uh, for a mono pedal or a stereo pedal if you wanted that. So that's nice. But that's TRS. It's uh, two uh, jacks and you need TIS plugs. Uh, there's a quarter inch stereo out. Then there's a two amp out. There's a headphone out, which is probably how many people will use that. And USB to hook it up to the computer to load IRs or use the editor. I would have loved 
for one of these devices finally to have Bluetooth and have an iPad or Android editor to just quickly go, oh, I want to change that. I don't want to fiddle with the interface, bam, and have it all touch screen. It, it really would have been nice. And uh, so far, I don't think any of those people do that. It's about time. So, no MIDI. No MIDI. If you want that, you need to go to the next level of Line 6 devices. Uh, this is an all-in-one thing, and it's not really supposed to communicate too much with your uh, other gear. Put it on the table, use everything that's inside. That's the philosophy. That's also why they're saying, oh, the price point's lower. Even though technically it's got all the features in terms of software that the higher gears, uh, gear has. So let's go look at a couple presets. Not too in-depth because we have a full video where I'm playing all the presets. The presets are weak. That's one thing that we know about Line 6. Um, you throw the helix on the table and the oh my god I'm floored effect is not quite as much there as it could be because it has a lot to offer if you put the time in. Uh, I think Line 6 should put the time in and actually put presets there that just kill us. So if we're looking at the first one, US Deluxe Normal, I'm thinking that's a Deluxe Reverb. Little Fender combo. Um, we have a spring reverb. We have an optical tram. It, it all, it's all there. It, it tells us what it's, what it, uh, what it uh, pretends to be. But it really doesn't floor me. Then I'm playing around with it and I'm programming a clean sound that just is insane. So, oh, that was a, that was a guitar. This Fender American Ultra Strat. hollow in the mid it doesn't sound like an amp and if that's what you play you go like ah uh, uh. but then you spend time with it and you're like okay whoa so what you can do here because I'm on the uh, edit mode So you have the option of um, quickly turning on sounds. But let me quickly show you a clean sound I programmed. Now that's what I call a clean. Matter of different tastes, but I think line six should have something that floors you like this. Yeah, that just doesn't jump out, it's just a flat, non alive sound. Whereas the one I programmed, the thing is, if I judge it based on the presets, I'm misjudging it, and I think many of you might do that. Or you don't know what you're going for, you're like, oh, that's a great clean. Whereas actually in reality, there's a lot more in there. Let's go to the next sound here. That's another little problem I have with it. It jumps around volume wise quite a bit. The presets are not really equalized. I want to compare that with the Plexi I made. Similar 
similar, but still not quite as alive. All I did is I call up the Plexi, put a Spring River on it, and I'm done. I literally didn't change any parameters. So it's not difficult to get to great sounds. Um, here we have kind of what they would call like a medley thing. <laughs> Well, we should probably check the tuning, which you can do with a standard tuner. Oh, what the crap. If you prefer strobe, you have a strobe tuner option. Which can get annoying, it's not as precise as the Peterson strobe tuner, which is insane, but it does the job. There we go. So, that's how you change parameters. Here's another clean. This is going to die in any mix. Because it's zero mids. I don't know who makes these presets. Now we have a lot more volume and only mids. Way to buy the... So let's take that as an example. We're going to go to view. And we're going to look at what has been done here. There's a wah, which let's quickly go into that. I'm going to switch to wah. And to Michelle, no, it's not a tone knob, it's a wah. Then we have a fuzz, which I can turn on if I wanted that, which is, I don't know, here. There's my volume, there's my external loop. Now let's say I want to move the external loop. What you do is you hit action and you move it where you want it. Very, very simple. I mean, there's nothing plugged in right now. Uh, you say action and done. That's how, that's how that works. Um, on the big helix, you can just erase a block. If you want a block erased here, you have to go to no pedal, which you would do by hitting this. Oh no, well, with this you can't do it. Um, Let's say we want to kill that fuzz. This turns it on and off as well. So here I can select what kind of effect block I want. And here you select the effect. I go to none. Bam. And that way you kind of don't eat up any processing power in that slot, which can become an issue. You have quite a few effect slots, more than in the HX stomp, but you have to... Maybe preserve your processing power for some fancy things, because all of a sudden things will be grayed out and not being selectable because you ran out of processing power. So here we have a tape, which doesn't make sense in that slot for me be in front of the amp. So I'll just move it actually behind the speaker. Yeah. No, I'll move it in front of the speaker. There we go. There's a comp. Maybe we turn that off. And here's my amp. So I have drive, bass, cut, everything that the original amp would have. And now we know why it's so bitey, because nothing's been cut. So let's use the cut a bit. Can use that tuner again. So if there's more to see, you click next page. There's my channel volume, sag, hum. I don't want a lot of hum. And bias. So I tamed that amp. Let's turn the compressor back on. Bye. <laughs> 
Okay, we have a transistor tape. Let's turn that off for now. Um, uses a 212. I just go select any of the carbs I want. There's a billion. Let's go to the one that we had here. that one. So let's go to a 57, which is going to be much more bitey. So I might want something that smooths that off a bit. High cut, low cut, early reflections. Uh, oh. You can move it in, you know, in around in the room a bit, uh, if you might want to call it that. We're, we're getting to a great result relatively quickly. Don't know why the presets aren't just that. Might be a matter of taste. So if I click on this, I see a list of caps, which might be better, or I can go to an IR, which we're not going to go into. I'm going to judge it based on what's built inside, not what you can buy on the internet and, and put on it. You can use IRs. I recommend there's more than enough speakers in there, way more than enough speakers to make you happy. I don't think you need to use IRs. What's in there is more than enough, if you ask me. So then here... We have the EQ, which is off, and the reverb, which we can turn off. For recording, good idea. Works. Should we look at reverbs? Oh God, why not? Why not? Let's look at reverbs. So I'm looking past you because I'm looking at the interface. Amazingly beautiful. Obviously, there's more. Obviously, big, big, awesome reverbs in there. We're gonna go with the room. You can see, once you get familiar with the interface, you get to the point rather quickly. Now I just want a little bit of delay. Turn that on. I 
I don't know what I'm doing. So um, I can click on this and then I see a list and look at all the freaking delays. That's not simple, that's double. Love the sweep echo. Uh, and where, where am I? And reversed and vintage. Gym. Even tidy kind of a thing. So, while we're here, let's do the whole thing for everything. I mean, I could be here for hours. Each of these has a different set of parameters. Okay. Mm hmm. Reverbs. Pitch. Comes with built in toads. You get filters. The jumping tadpole sound. And, and there's a, there's a Why is there a tail coming out of my ear? Are you supposed to be up there? I don't think you're supposed to be up there. No, Zephot. How are you gonna get out of there? Come on, come on, house, come on, house. Come on, house, da. Come. Leslie! Katze, come raus! I guess I'll leave this open so the cat can come out. Yeah, let's have cats! Good idea. Uh, so, many, many, many filters that you never knew you wanted. <laughs> Yeah. 
and EQs, many, and compressors. Why would you need that many compressors? And drives. Endless, endless, endless drives. Here, yeah, that's what I want. Save. I could, of course, change the name. A little bit of a pain in the ass. Easier in the editor. Save. Um, so now we're here. That sound that. Save what? Come out here! See, that sounds modeled in digital. With blown up low end, I, I don't get what they're doing. Th that works for me. Th that sound kind of is stopping me to play. There's the freaking cat. What are you doing? I'm walking here! And here's the red channel. Oh, okay. Moving on. Let's see what else we have. Also, it doesn't really floor me. Let's go to that one. And... Turn that off. Little bit of reverb, fine. Turn the comp off. The kinky boost, turn that off. And we look at some amps. Starting here. Thing is, there's too many amps. You can, of course, also use a preamp if you wanted to go two amp out into your power amp or something like this. It's possible. the derailed Ingrid, that's one of my favorites. Can you get the point? Bass amps. Not one, but a billion. Okay, um, furthermore, well, of course, each of these are pushies, so you can push them in. Uh, editing is rather easy once you get the hang of it, how to get from A to B and from one uh, to the other. I never know how to get, if I get out of here by pushing this or this, uh, but whatever, you push them. Uh, you push both of these, you're in the menu, there's not too much uh, to see there. The foot switches do not have the touch sensitivity that the HX Stomp or the Helix does, whereas you touch it and then it goes to uh, on the menu to show you what uh, what you can do with that. 
uh, or assign it or whatever. Uh, I find that actually a little bit more annoying than useful because you touch them by accident and then what you were doing changes. So I, I, I like that. Um, so you can assign something here. Uh, then we have the global EQ, which is oh here up here. No, no pages here. You have to do that up here. So you have a global three band and low cut and high cut EQ. Then we have the global settings. Um, uh, whether the main out is line or instrument, uh, and so on and so on. Very nice. Uh, you can, of course, record with USB or even use USB to pump sounds into it. If you wanted that uh, link amp and cap, so when you pick an amp, it picks the right cap, which is nice. You can turn that off if it gets annoying. Um, here you do something with switches and the pedals. And here's your whole MIDI section. So, again, I cannot possibly go into every single feature of every single block because there's just too many. Um, if we just turned everything off and just looked at the amps with the same cap, we'd be here for an hour. So, let's go into my two cents. So, what do I think of the Pod Go? Well, it's four. 79 in Germany, it's 449 in, in America. Uh, that's that's good. It's got everything that the HX Stomp LT or the big ass Helix has in terms of all the algorithms. It doesn't have all the features in terms of ins and outs. It doesn't have MIDI. It doesn't have the parallel effects path and all that stuff. But realistically, that's advanced shit that should be in the more expensive advanced boxes. When it comes to what you need, it's there, plus 90% more, which is one of the gripes I have with it. It is too much shit, Line 6. I'm going to be honest. Sell this for $3.99, put in 10 amps, 10 caps, 5 algorithms on each of the stomp boxes, and make the other stuff uh, something you buy for... $1.99 an amp for $1.99 an algorithm. You're going to make more money doing that than overloading us with all these options because it is information overload. Outside, the world is dying, it's raining, and I don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, it is information overload. I'm sitting here going through, and I'm like, oh my God, will this list end? Now, how are you going to find an amp that works? Realistically, you need a good clean. You need a maybe slightly different clean if you're pushing it. Talked to Sophia yesterday, and Sophia was like, I don't even need any cleans. I'm like, learn to play cleans, lady. Um, but then uh, you need an overdrive -y one, maybe a Voxy one, maybe an overdrive -y Marshall one. You need uh, something high again, you need something lead. Okay, technically you can do that all with one or two amps, but let's say you need six amps. Let's say you need 10 amps. Why do we have a hundred or whatever that is? You, you, you get into dialing through amps and you forget making music. And then you pair that with a billion different caps? At I asked to that, it's too much. Which delay do I use? Oh, come on. Now, I think they should load it up with the nitty gritty stuff that you need. 10 amps, 10 caps, six to 10 algorithms per pedal. Make the make the pedal make the whole thing cheaper and then sell it to us digitally or sell it to us for the price that it is. Everyone's happy that they have all the options, but let us put check marks on the ones that we play and we go like, yeah, I'm never going to use that. And then it's out of the list. Let us reduce the lists to what we need and want. Because I would go through that really really quickly and leave one or two filters. I would leave, you know, uh, well, the, the one rotary that I would like out of the three. And I would probably have six to ten amps maximum. And I would very likely have three caps. I'd have a V30 cap, I'd have a cream bag 412, and I'd have something smaller for cleans and leads. Done. But that way you're not scrolling through all the... It is information overload. It is, you're going to get... Um, 
Option paralysis, that's the word I'm looking for. Option paralysis. It is all the options of all the amps in the freaking world. And it might stop you from actually making music because you're fiddling around with the options. It's great that they're there. It's great that they're there for the same price. Uh, but it's a lot. So the one thing I want from this, I don't even care that it doesn't have MIDI because I have four presets at my disposal that I can hit with my feet, all fine. I would say, give me the option to have a reduced mode, turn that on and off, where simply everything where I put a check mark disappears. That should be easy to do, and it would make ed editing on the box a lot easier. And also, it becomes yours. Yours has your favorite amps in it, where someone else's pod go has their favorite amp list. Maybe it even has that, and I don't know, I haven't found. But at that price point, it is light. It weighs 2.4 kilos. It has a handle at the bottom. Um, it's relatively easy to program except for all the options. Which we will find out later. I I'm going to take that away right now. There is zero difference in sound between this and the HX stop. Or there is zero difference in sound between this and the big Helix. Which is more than three times as expensive. It has way more options, I get that, way more ins and outs, bigger build, all that, but it is realistically, it sounds exactly the same. So if you need that for home use, throwing it in, in the big pouch of a gig bag or, you know, in, in, a, in a rucksack or whatever, it's kick ass. Money shouldn't be an issue here in terms of... Uh, no, again, that because it isn't that expensive. Now, this compared to the Moors or the Hot Tones, the Ampero or the Moore GE 300 or 400, whatever, realistically, and I'm getting paid for this video, just to let you know, but I get this because it's a Line 6. It's where it all started. It's, I mean, I recorded albums and albums with pods. This is, you know, my home. And I mean, when you start it up, look at this. What comes up is... A freaking bean. How cool is that? I love that. It's a little detail, but that's nice. So, um, sound-wise, if you spend the time with it, it can absolutely deliver. The Ampero is a good box. Clocks in at, I think, $3.99, so it's not that much cheaper. Um, and the more stuff isn't bad. Absolutely not. Price, uh, bang for the buck, good stuff. Uh, for me, this is this is the way to go. I'm very impressed by it. Way more impressed than I thought I would be. Um, which you will see in the other videos. If you want to now see all the different presets, there's an extra video. If you want to see it against the HX, really in-depth looking at everything, there's an extra video. If you want to see it against the Helix, there's an extra video. If you want to see how the ref sounds hold up against the real amps, there's an extra video. Yeah, we're going in depth, not as in depth as we could go. We're not checking it out with amps and the amp out and the preamps, and we haven't even looked at every algorithm in depth. We can't. Thank you, Line 6, for commissioning this video. Hope it helped. This is a cool product. Um, I'll put links below to everything that you need. Please use them, that really helps me. If you're buying something else, please use my links as well. Just click on the link, then buy whatever you want. It helps me. So if you want to help me out, if you like the channel, buy through my links, either at Sweetwater or Toma, and it absolutely helps. Links to these shirts, I don't get paid for that, uh, are also below. And um, yeah, Patreon, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. That really helps. And... I mean, I would say animals at the end, but we had tons of animals in this. Leslie, do we even need animals at the end? Of course. Of course. She says, of course. Leslie's up there switching this whole thing. Thank you, Leslie. And uh, animals at the end. <laughs>